Hello folks, I hope you're doing well. I can't quite believe we're almost in May already. This is the end of April I'm filming this, so we're nearly, we're nearly in May anyway, but it's the May video. But it's a little bit funny, the weather at this time of year for sowing seeds, because if we look outside, you may be able to see behind me, it's a little bit dull. I can hear the rain tingling on the roof. And over here, we've got some of the plants that I keep taking out during the day and bringing back in the house overnight because things are still just a little bit cold, well, a little bit weird, because last, last week I was cutting about out there in my shorts and t-shirt. This week I'm sat in here in a big woolly jumper. Monday, Tuesday this week, we were down to about minus two. I think much of the UK had a big cold stop. There were some cold northerly winds coming in that sort of cooled everything right down. So one thing, please be careful with the weather and those frost dates just yet when you've got your little delicate plants. Don't put them out too early and kill them off and have to sow them all again. One other quick thing to mention, and a big thank you to Jesse at Plot37, who sent a wee WhatsApp with notice of this, and Thompson and Morgan have a seed sale on at the moment, so if you see any seeds you want to buy, please go and check out Thompson and Morgan. Some of them are all the way down to about 49p. I will pop a link in the description below, and after all, you can never have too many seeds, can you? Nah, there's never, never too many. You can always have more. You always need more. Anyway, go and have a look. I'm, I'm not sponsored by Thompson & Morgan. Don't give me anything. Don't give me any seeds. Don't give me any money. Don't give me nothing. It's just a good deal to go and have a look at. Anyway, under the seeds, I'm doing this month. So first up, we've got some beans on the go. This one here is a dwarf French bean called Ferrari. Now, they don't grow too high. They're only about maybe 18 inches, two foot at the most, but they are prolific croppers. I had a little bit of trouble with them last year. They can be a little bit delicate. So I'm going to be just a bit more careful with them than I was last year. As I mentioned before about some of the weather, they're going to get a little bit of TLC before they go outside properly. And next up is a French climbing bean. And this one here is Bellotto, otherwise known as Dragon's Tongue or something like that. I think they're called, you, you see them when they grow. They're in this beautiful sort of whitey, creamy sort of case. And the beans are this colour as well. They've got these already pinky spots all over them. They look absolutely amazing, fantastic. And the good thing is you can pick them young and you can cook them straight away or you can dry them out and you can store them and you've got a good supply of beans all the way over the winter. Depends how much space you've got for growing things. But that's a bit of a plan. I might try and split mine sort of 50-50, dry them out and you've got that good source of sort of protein there that you want to get from some vegetables over the winter. Next up, I'm going to get the sweet corn on the go this month. And this one here is a variety called Incredible F1. Now that's pretty much my go-to variety, sweet corn. It's the one I use year after year. It's a really good cropper, despite the, the best efforts of the rats at the allotment, trying to weed it all, all the time. It gives loads and loads and loads of sweet corn. It's well worth a try. If you've never done sweet corn before, try Incredible F1. It's not too difficult to grow. Next up is a little bit of successional sowing, you know, I know I'm filming this at the end of April, but we're nearly in May now, so a lot of the stuff I've already sown, lettuces, spring onions, radish, that sort of stuff, once it's fully grown and I've picked it and used it, I want to have something ready to replace it with there and then. So we've basically got no empty space during this sort of peak growing season. So the next things I'm going to get on the go is some more spring onions. This variety here is called Evergreen and it's a bunching onion, so I'll multi-sow them, you know, five or six seeds in each hole. I've already got some Ishikura and some Katana on the go. Ishikura this year, rubbish germination. Katana, new variety you've tried out, brilliant germination. So you want to try a variety out, try Katana, and I'm going to try this new variety here, Evergreen. Next up is going to be some Rocket, so we'll get some more Rocket on the, gro on the grow, on the go. I'm sure I do that nearly every month. I always say on the grow, and I should just say on the grow anyway, instead of on the go. The rocket, uh, the thing to remember, rocket, yeah, you're not far off coming to when you want to finish off sowing this, because once you start getting into sowing this sort of stuff in June and July, rocket doesn't like it really, really hot weather, because it bolts dead quickly. So if you want rocket, get some on the grow this month. Uh, kind of moving on from rocket, I know rocket's her, but kind of similar. We're going to start successional sowing the lettuces. We've got two different varieties of lettuces out there already that are grown rather fast, may I say. And this is a, a new variety we're trying called, called Paris Island Cost. I like the cost lettuce, so we'll get some of these on the go. And as and when we pick those, hopefully those little plants will be ready 
to replace them with. And again, speaking of successional sewing, the last one we're going to do is radish. So we've got some rainbow radish and some other different type of radish that the name evades me. Never tried this one before. This is a new one to do the successional sewing again. This one is flamboyant three, a lovely sort of red one there. So we'll give that a try and we'll see how it works out. Next up, herbs. It's that time of year. We're going to get some herbs on the go. We're going to get basil. We're going to get chives. We're going to get parsley and we're going to get dill. One thing to say about growing fresh herbs is always grow way more than you think you're going to need. Because when you're using fresh herbs in cooking, you always need to use about five or six times the amount of dry herbs you do for fresh herbs. I mean, the flavour that you get from them, the smells, absolutely everything, is so much better in the fresh herbs. And they, they love the warm weather, the hot weather for growing in outside. So if you're doing fresh herbs, please grow loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of them because you need way more than you'll ever think you do. And last up is flowers. I always like to grow some flowers. Now I do have some sunflowers on the go, but I'm going to do a few more. And I got these two packets of seeds free in a magazine this month. So I thought, well, why not give them a go? This one here is called Starburst Mixed. And it looks like there's some beautiful different colours in there. Some oranges, yellows, reds, pinks, that sort of things. So we'll get them on the go. And the other one we're going to do is Sweet William. Now, I've never done Sweet William before. This will be the first time. We'll give it a bash and hopefully it turns out all right. Anyway, that's what I'm sowing this month. If you want to see how those seeds get on, please think about subscribing. It's absolutely free. You just have to click the button and that is you subscribed. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, folks, and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.